What is this? What is this? Are we actually starting on time? Oh my god. God, who am I and where have I been? How you guys doing out there? It's Solar Gray, the Cinematic Sorcerer, coming at you from the Wizard's Tower. How you guys doing out there? And welcome to the dark side of the room. And when the band breaks open many years too soon, and if there is... Okay, yeah, that's about it. I've been trying to get a band together so I can write better theme music, but you know what? <coughs> Musicians, they tend to want to get paid, so that that's a thing. And I ain't got no money. I ain't, uh, I ain't a thing. So welcome to the dark side of the room, where we talk about games and life and the universe and everything that's um, compared to all of those things. You know. So I am Solar Gray, the cinematic sorcerer. How you guys doing out there? And we got a lot of stuff to talk about today. Day. I'm letting you guys know I'm a little tired and I was kind of thwarted today with a few prom plumbing problems so that became a thing but before I get all that stuff out of the way let's talk the business because there's always that stuff that's like hey I gotta pay bills so thank you guys grab a friend send out like you know uh, announcements on your various social media things out there and if you guys can pull up a keyboard and you guys got questions for me to read on the show or any of that stuff, feel free to pull up a keyboard and type in back in the deck at gmail.com. It's B-A-C-K-I-N-T-H-E-D-E-C-K at gmail.com. Um, make sure to subscribe and all that stuff over on the YouTube channel because, well, um, we don't really like doing stuff on YouTube, but that is one of the best ways to get followers out there when learning Discord and all that jazz. Um, also, follow us up on the social media things, which is probably a way that you guys got these things. Um, the Instagram, the Twitter, you can find us at BidP, that's at bid underscore p because bid underscore p is the way that we do just about everything now if you guys really want to help out in a way that is awesome and really really out there and you guys want your own little ranks which is cool because i would love to give ranks to everybody out there head on over to patreon.com slash bid underscore p and check out ooh our patreon page look at that where for the low low price of one dollar a month that means i'm less than a candy bar uh you have access to all of our stuff out there uh you guys will be officially a decker i mean a dollar a month come on now guys everybody i i, I lose more than that in change um whenever i get on my motorcycle and i can't um and i didn't pay with an atm card God, look at me. It's almost like I'm not from the ghetto or anything. And, of course, you start getting your card rankings and all that stuff, like the shout-outs I have to give to my queens and aces, uh, queens being Shannon Boom Boom Lay, and, of course, <coughs> uh, my ace being Jennifer Crow. That's uh, The queens are at the $20 tier, the aces are at $100 tier, and at $100 a month, I gotta be at work on time. Y'all know how that goes. Also, if you guys are really into what we're talking about and the roundtable groups and all that stuff, but you just don't have time to watch, I get that. And I love y'all anyway. I love y'all like I love barbecue ribs. Just head on over to soundcloud.com slash BID underscore P and check out our archive. We've got so many tracks that you can listen to. And I know a lot of people are like, I don't like SoundCloud, blah, 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 blah. Working on getting on other platforms, but they're requiring like, you know, money money down payments or higher followers and all that stuff and that's the catch 22 you know you don't get followers until you're until you're famous but you can't get famous without followers it's it's all these different things but <clears throat> till then i'm on soundcloud and for as long as i can afford to keep paying for the account you guys can download and keep everything that we post up there for free forever so that is our gift to you so now that we're done with all that, how you guys doing out there? That's right, we are doing the thing. We're doing the thing. Now today I talked about, um, uh, I told the people on the announcements that we were gonna be talking about a few different things today. Um, you know, there is, 
how can I put this? There's always been a little bit of contention between myself and competitive gamers. And when I say competitive, I mean tournament players. And I wanted to expand on that just a little bit today because, um, you know, honestly, and you guys can check it out over on Deckers on the Book where I have actually, um, you know, this is one of the places that I like talking to people um, about the stuff that um, that we're going to be having on the show, you know. But yeah, it's um, this is one of them things where I'm just sitting up going, all right, this is where we're at. This is what we're doing. And um, one of the things that has come out um, of a lot of discussions I've had, and I ain't going to lie, I have offended a lot of my friends. And I don't want to be that guy. So I'm actually going to put this out there right now. Nothing I'm saying is meant as a personal attack. All right. That's that's not what I'm all about. All right. But I have been in a lot of gaming circles for a long time. And when I say long time, I am talking over 20 years like with gaming being my number one hobby. I've been gaming for three, yeah, about three decades. Um, but the big thing on that has been, um, you know, I game for fun, I game for escapism. And a lot of the times when my friends and I are talking about gaming as a culture, a lot of them, like, they game not just for a hobby, but they approach the hobby as a lifestyle or as a career you, you, you see what i mean um like they will spend eight nine ten eleven hours reading all the stuff on the internet keeping up with the latest erratas um trying to make sure that everything that they do with the game lines up with the whole gaming culture and the whole paradigm and this is at the expense of a lot of other things they could be doing and I don't judge that I'm cool I'm like dude that is you that is how you play that is you know I, I actually kind of find that admirable but <clears throat> what I tend to find is with games that have um, a competitive culture specifically games that have tournaments involved such as Magic the Gathering Yu-Gi-Oh, um, Pokemon, um, tabletop miniatures games like Heroclix, War Machine, well, Warhammer 40k, um, Batman, Star Wars Legion. Um, the places where competition can tend to get fierce. Um, I, I speak often about time and place because I'm a really big, really big proponent of time and place. There's a time and place for everything. But one of the things that tends to happen within gaming communities, and this is one of the reasons that I started the company, is you can go to a gaming store and you can learn a new game and it's fun and it's cool. But the only community that's left to play with is the super competitive um, community who tend to either only play in tournaments or every game is based on practice for the next tournament. Like that is their whole paradigm. This is the wall, this is the bubble that they're in. And a lot of the times the community that you have access to is only within that little bubble. And this is where I put paradigms, um, gaming paradigms into the announcements. Okay. Um, last week we talked about understanding the player that you are and understanding the players that your friends are just to make sure that there might be some level of compatibility or incompatibility. Essentially, know thyself, know the people you're playing with and that'll maximize fun. Um, but today I'm, I'm really focusing on competitive and casual along with um, party, okay? Cause um, I don't, I, I really don't think I went over that well enough with you guys last week, and I'm sorry about that. But yeah, um, so what, what do I mean with the competitive scene? I know a lot of people who cut their teeth in what I would call a toxic gaming environment, 
okay and you'll see a lot of this hey thanks for the thanks for the sub vixen um you guys will see a lot of this stuff all over the internet okay um there's a whole lot of stuff online where like if you try and learn any new online game and by new online game i mean new to you if you go into battlefield or overwatch or <laughs> even minecraft to a certain level you'll get the standard um gaming toxicity of hey i have a question oh get good noob or reset the clock uh, somebody is asking a question that was answered six years ago in a post that is buried within a forum on a website that we're not going to give you the address to so google it and don't ask us any questions y you see what i mean um it's very gatekeepery it's a very gatekeepery type thing and i am very 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 hostile to that kind of thing because um when we talk paradigms um one of the things i've noticed with people is every single person comes from a place of what they consider normalcy okay um what's normal for you is normal for you and it's very easy to consider or contemplate that that level of normal normalcy is the same everywhere you go now part of this show is like you know a bits and pieces of my biography and um hang, i gotta cough i actually gotta blow my nose so please excuse me for a minute <coughs> um and part of my biography is that yes i grew up in the ghetto in the middle of gang wars and gang territories like in my generation it was the worst spot um today we've got places like um baltimore and um certain parts of detroit and heart still goes out to flint i'd help you guys more if i had more money i ain't gonna lie um but when i left okay i left and entered into other paradigms some paradigms were suburban some were trailer park some were desert some were mountains and every place that i went oh <laughs> Sorry, the the chat over here is like, bless you, bless you. Um, yeah, one of the things that I learned was that um, the first thought, the core belief of people change from region to region. Okay, and when it comes to the first principle, as they would call it in a college course, um, when the first principle that you hold about a subject is different from the first principle that is held within the group or paradigm or society or clique or school or whatever you want to name a group of people um if it's different from theirs there's going to be i don't want to say friction but there is going to be some pains okay um some of the pains might be brought on by adaptation but one of the things that tends to be most universal is that when you go in to a new group or a new set of people, they already have the way that they do things. And it really doesn't occur to them that people outside of them might do things differently. Okay. Um, we hold on to an idea of normal just this is normal this is common sense this is the way it's done and that's all that the way it's done the way it's normal all that common common sense here here common sense here i used to tell people uh when i lived in fullerton california that common sense there was to um was to always leave a tip when you went to a restaurant where i come from common sense is don't walk through the park in nickerson's gardens after the street lights come on you know um these were standard general things and when those people sometimes went to my old world i could talk them through it and quite a few of them 
actually got it through their heads that culture is different and there was no one straight line culture um, across the country, the cities, the state. Um, it's just there. there's no one line culture. That's the glory of America. But it's also the complication of America because we want so hard to hold on to, well, everybody knows it. Um, it's the way it's always been done. It's common and all that stuff. So when you learn a new game and you end up in a new paradigm, and by new paradigm, I mean just that. You go to a new game store um, and you join a new gaming group. Um, this is one of the things that's really been attempting to be addressed with the Dungeons and Dragons Adventure League. Um, people are going to different groups of gamers with different uh, different dungeon masters, different game runners, different games. Here comes that sneeze. Give me. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give you guys a little bit of music. There we go. And I'll give you a pretty picture. Right back. <laughs> Ooh, boy. Oh. <laughs> Ah. Hmm. All right, and we are back. So, you end up going <coughs> to uh, Dunka. Uh, you end up going to a new store or a new gaming group or just a new set of circumstances, even joining a new game with old friends. And there is a lot of crossover with what is common and what is the culture of that place. Now, I come, well, once I moved down to the South Bay of, of California, um, most of my gaming groups were steeped in a pseudo-competitive place. And by that, I mean um, we had quite a few dungeon masters who were more focused on, well, not, I'm not going to say what I thought I was going to say. Their method of having fun with playing the game, any game, is to be more clever than the other people playing. Okay? Um, it's almost like, oh, I don't know, um, watching any script written by... Um, written by Joss Wheaton pretty much in the early 2000s. Everyone's tripping over each other to be the funny one or to get the solution or all that stuff. Um, fortunately, he's grown as a writer since then. Thank you. Um, so when people started gaming and playing these games, if that is the place that they're in, they come from this mindset of, if I don't know everything, if I'm not on top of my game, I'm gonna get screwed. You know, and um, I was in a Vampire the Masquerade LARP for, God, like 11 years um, with this group of people. And this group of people really crafted an environment where that kind of, what is the term I'm looking for? That part of, that kind of environment was the culture. Um, they ran a political intrigue game of Vampire the Masquerade. And this is also where I want to talk about paradigms because especially now with the internet in the 21st century, we love, 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 love. I'm saying that and feel free to at me. I dare you. But we love talking to each other in definitive axiomatic statements. Okay? We say, well, we're playing this game and this game is all about this. This movie is all about this this painting is all about this like there is one definitive meaning and everything else is just childish imaginings okay now sometimes we might mean well this is what i get out of that thing but we verbally speak in very axiomatic statements like um white wolf games were about intrigue in a pose <laughs> Um, <laughs> sorry, uh, the chat's going up. Yes, I have a soothing, nasally voice. Um, <clears throat> you know, some people would say 
Vampire the Masquerade, just that game, is about political intrigue between ancient vampires. And then someone would be like, well, how come you start the game as a weak and new vampire? And a different, you know, you go to a different gaming circle and they're running Vampire the Masquerade as a monstrous game where they get to play these monsters that have contest killing people in um in a city area you go to another game and you find that these people are playing this game in a way that is closer to a high fantasy epic <clears throat> um but when we discuss things with each other it's almost like we decide the aspect that we are personally or we as a group are going to follow and then that becomes the whole definition of the subject matter um i find this thinking to be a little dangerous especially because i very rarely start any groups from the ground up that i'm a part of and i tend to be the perpetual new guy so um my old D, &D group back from junior high you know, they were from the mindset of Dungeons and Dragons is all about killing monsters and taking their stuff. That was the sole purpose of the game. That was it. No role playing, um, no investigation, no exploring new worlds. Kill monsters, take their stuff, shut up. That's what the game is. In opposed to that is the type of role playing game that we want to play. Do you see the difference between the two? Okay. Um, everything that we do, every single hobby that we get into or game that we can play, um, has so many different facets because we are adult and we can see things. Um, well, I'm going to strike that. Most tabletop RPGs have that. Board games, on the other hand, they tend to have one cut and dry thing. Like Monopoly is about buying up everything and pushing everyone out um, in a very, what is the term I'm looking for, in a very corporate financial cutthroat manner. Those are the rules to that game. But when it comes to games with a larger scope, not, not necessarily a larger premise, just a larger scope, um... Um, like role-playing games are more to the point games that don't have a definitive winning condition and this comes down to the ultimate par paradigm games <laughs> um, games are played to be won that is the only reason to play a game it, it, you're supposed to win the game you, you play the game you win the game and I've always been of the mindset. Oh, I got a helicopter coming past. That's the tough part about being in a tower, guys. Um, I've always had a problem with a game is meant to be won because it puts this it puts this pressure on winning that tends to fall on a very slippery slope. And I don't mean that. Um, um. I don't mean that in the logical fallacy way, but we have seen that if a game is meant to be won, then you have to do everything that you can to win outside of cheating, but then cheating becomes a gray area because the rules don't necessarily say that I can't, and then we get into the battle of the most clever, and then what game are we playing at that point? You, you, you see what I mean? Um, ah, Geeks Meow is making a good point. Um, there are, yeah, you know, um, to the Geeks Meow, um, are playing as a collaborative story, not a GM versus a player. And I am right there. I love the collaborative storytelling aspect, and I love the acting that I can do as a role player because I'm a failed actor, and this gives me an outlet for that kind of thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I have been in games where it is a everybody see who can beat me like players versus gm and i don't particularly like those games but there are players that do 
okay? And this is where I want to talk about, again, re-elaborate re on those different types of game players. Um, I, you know, I'm kind of like Johnny Appleseed when it comes to game playing. I take games everywhere and I'm willing to teach anybody. And I hear a lot of through line statements um, when it comes to a lot of the games I teach. Now, most of the time, a lot of people that are learning the game just to humor me, regardless of the game, use so many cross, um, cross reference statements. And the most common one is, well, that doesn't make sense. I hear that so often. And I'm like, you don't know whether or not it makes sense because you haven't read the rule book, you're not understanding the context under which the rule is there, that is what I'm here for. But what they're there for is to play a game and beat me at it. Um, again, I, I talked a little bit last week about the competitive mindset of if I can beat the person teaching me, then I am the master and I am great. And um, I still don't have a solution for that type of thing. Um, I do tend to have a lot of board games that are two-player board games where there is a winner and a loser um, or a winner and a not winner, but I'm there to teach the rules. You, you, you see what I mean? I teach, I teach how to play, not how to win. And a lot of people want to learn how to win before they understand all the rules and then they get upset. And over the past few years, I've been talking to you guys about this type of thing a lot. Um, I think Wizards of the Coast or one of the gaming magazines five years ago posted a list of different types of players. And the most common thread across all the types of Magic players I had was, well, this person plays because they think they can win this way and they think they can win this way. And it was always a matter of winning. And I asked the question, is winning an ineffable component to fun? Now, my experience tells me no, because if it was an ineffable component, then I can't really see how games would be played because if it's no fun to lose, why take the risk? You know, why take the risk of losing? Um, if winning is such a is such an integral part of having fun, then um, you know, I, I I can't see the object of playing a game where losing is a possibility, if the possibility can lead to zero fun being had. There had to be more. There there had to be more to that. Um. So let's see, hang on, I gotta check my notes here. Check my notes, check my notes, check my notes. This is where we get into casual gaming and communication. And I had to link these two things together because I know a lot of people who play games and tournaments. Indeed, <clears throat> some of the biggest contentious statements I have gone through over the years have been my friends who learned how to become gamers in competitive environments that believe that they play games casually. And I say believe because this is where the communication comes in. There is a different base definition for casual and competitive. Now, their behavior has told me over the years that their version of playing casually is not playing in a tournament that game and my definition of playing casually and this is where i want to expand on it for this show because it's my show is <laughs> um playing a game for the purpose of having fun where the competitive nature or winning of the game is not within the top three motivations okay um Players who play like this are terrible to learn from. They really are. Because as I stated last week, they give enough of the rules for you to kind of understand how to move your pieces 
And then they go on to play the game to win as though you're playing on equal footing or whether or not you're or as if you're playing within one striation of their class level. Um, this is never, never fun for the person learning. OK, now make no mistake. Make no mistake. Most of the time I'm teaching a game. I've studied the rule book. I've looked up things online primarily because I want to make sure that I'm teaching the game correctly. But I am quick to say, I don't know. Let's look it up. I'm not quite sure. Even lately, when I teach people who are recovering competitive gamers, and yeah, it does take a little bit of recovering. Um, I'll get into that later. Um, when they'll tell me, well, that's against the rules. And I'm like, okay, show me. Like, show me how that's against the rules or show me why you can't do that or why do you think that you can't do the thing I'm suggesting. Like, you know, I, I, I'd like to see that because if I'm mistaken, I'd happily take it back. It's not a big deal. Um, and that has eased a lot of fears and a lot of, com and a lot of the resentments that tends to come from the competitive nature. And when I say the competitive nature, I mean that thing in the back of some people's heads where if they lose for any reason, they as individuals are lesser than what they thought they were. And that is such a dangerous mindset. And I'm, I don't mean that just with games, okay? Um, there is so much to learn and so much freedom and lack of stress from being able to say, I was mistaken about that. I was incorrect about that. Oh, that's what that meant. Okay, that was something that I didn't know. I'd like to look more into it, you know. Um, but there becomes this meta competitive thing and I get it. I grew up in the 90s, okay, where teachers, teachers in school used the phrase, what do you mean you don't know? And I don't mean, oh, you don't know. Well, can you elaborate on what you do know so that we can find where there are pieces of missing knowledge and remedy that particular ailment? No, 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 no. It was, what do you mean you don't know? You know? <laughs> And um, I'm like, I don't know. I missed that day of class. I might have been sleeping through class. I might not have understood what I read. Thus, I'm asking the question. Y you see what I mean? Um, so there's a level of there is a level of self worth that gets put on knowing. I mean, you can see it all over YouTube. Even some of the most informed and intelligent broadcasters. Um, mock people who don't know what they're talking about and there's this appeal to expertise that is starting to make um to make communication between people very difficult and well how so sorcerer you know what do you know you might not know what you're talking about true however when we are doing things for fun or interacting with other people, there is this very toxic mindset of unless you are an expert, don't tell me anything. My study and my understanding of what I've studied on my own with you not living in my head makes everything I say valuable and everything you say worthless, stupid, and ignorant. And that is how people treat each other. And this is what I'm here to try and remedy, you know? Um, one of the things I've learned as an adult is that your social strata, gender, Financial um, fluidity and social inclusion really has a big bearing on the information you have access to and the way that you process it.
okay um, I hear this when I'm arguing with people on the alt-right different channel meet me down at the docks um, who try and push this narrative that people of my skin color are genetically predisposed to being less intelligent and they'll try and use statistics of grades in the area that I grew up in and college graduation rates and I'm like you know there's a financial thing um, that revolves around that because of redlining and um, segregation of the 60s through the 80s that made it so that, you know, black people and Latino people didn't have access to loans for homes and um, the homes that they had access to rent um, aren't valued very high, thus low property taxes, thus underfunded schools. So if you have someone who has a very high capacity for learning that doesn't have access to tools that are as optimized for learning as they would be in a higher income area, it's gonna seem like they are less intelligent, you know, because they don't have access to the same information. You know, histories are taught differently depending on where one goes um <clears throat> required reading you know there's required reading that is statewide in california but the stuff that's required in california is completely different from what's required in kentucky let alone the context of those things you, you, you see what i mean um there's no baseline across our entire culture but we use terms like intelligence or you know if you don't know what you're talking about shut up and I've been cranky with people because I'm like, look, I am amazing at the information that I have had access to. However, there's a lot of opportunity to exercise my knowledge or practice my skills that have not been afforded to me, but have been afforded to my friends because they were born in the right families or gone to the right schools. You know, I mean, that whole, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Yeah, that, that, that's a thing. So I've been trying to ask my friends to not feel as though my perspective is telling them that their perspective is incorrect, but do not write off my life experience and the knowledge that I've been able to get access to because you've been able to get access to different knowledge, you know, <laughs> um, it, it it's a real thing but again that brings us right back to the paradigmic thing of what is normal what is regular you know what is that paradigm most people don't understand that as soon as you are in a culture you are in some kind of echo chamber some kind of environment with common stuff and that's not a bad thing okay none of this is a bad thing the only time it becomes untenable and sometimes toxic is when introduction of an outside factor comes in okay if someone that didn't grow up in that area doesn't have the same values it's not that they are saying that your values or your skill as a gamer or as a writer or as a gm or as a painter is inferior or inconsequential it's just not something that they understand. Um, my gaming mentor, Norman Lau, <clears throat> amazing dude, amazing dude. He taught me a fantastic phrase when artists that I know shove their art in my face. And I mean just that. I mean exactly that. Like they will have painted something and they'll go, hey, Solar. You know, and here's the thing. I took maybe an art class in junior high, okay? Now, I love comic books, I do, I love comic books, but I don't look at comic books as a delivery system for art. I look at comic books as a medium of storytelling, um, but I don't really have an eye for art because I was never taught what to look for or what to look at, thus my background. <laughs> You know, this background right here I made in Photoshop and it took me seven months because I don't know what I'm doing. I, I don't know what I'm doing and I couldn't afford to pay anyone who did. Um, and I'm not ashamed of that. 
because that's just like being ashamed of me not being able to fly a helicopter. I've never been behind the behind the controls of a helicopter, you know, and it's like, well, this stuff is just basic stuff that you learn in the third grade. And I'm like, no, dude, this is the stuff that you learned in the third grade. I learned about being responsible and taking, um, you know, being held accountable for my actions and standing up for principles like you know, standing up to the bully in school, you know, and I learned those principles because people were dying. You know, that's the paradigm that I come from. So I learned ethical principles in the classroom and I had chances to practice them on the schoolyard, but I was never good at art. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it, it's just that simple. And no, no one learned in the third grade. Okay. No one learned how to fly a helicopter in the third grade. Those things are um, very, very complicated. Like, you know, they have pedals. They, they, they literally have pedals. It's weird. But yeah, so it's a, ma it's a matter of um, when people think that what they do is ordinary, um, they have a hard time imagining something outside of that bubble and this isn't a bad thing but this is one of the reasons that i push free thinking and being open to things outside of what we've gotten used to now most of my friends are middle-aged now and that becomes harder and harder as you get older sorry guys if you guys are in high school watching this or in junior high watching this it's just a thing we don't have as much stamina as we used to have um it's just, it's a truism. We just, we have to spend our energy much more frugally. So there are certain things that we're just too tired to be passionate about. <laughs> um, and the concept of learning anything new becomes very, very daunting. So I get that with my friends. I'm not a person that lives by that because I've never been comfortable and I've always been striving for the next thing up. You, you, you see what I mean? I've never been like, well, I just want, you know, I just want like a retirement fund so I can just kick back and do these things. That's that's not me. That's not how I was built. But if you were built like that, cool, you know, great for you. You know, I know who to call when I just want to kick back and have a cup of tea. <laughs> you know, it's just a thing. And I like tea, you know, and coffee and, you know, various other hot beverages. Oh, are there hot beverages other than coffee and tea? Anyway, <laughs> um, but when it comes down to it, um, I'm big on communication between these things. But one of my friends, one of my friends actually pointed something out to me that I kind of have to apologize to people for. And that is this, um, very often um, when I talk to my friends, and this is one of my friends that I'm so scared will end up on the alt-right that I try and talk with them at least twice a week. Um, yeah, when this guy and I talk, he said something really interesting to me, which was, I told him that he assumes that people um, are as willing to, to study as he is, and that he has a better education than a lot of people that he's been around, or at least a more in-depth education at the things he talks about than the people that he's around. And he told me, though he owns that, um, we were having a different discussion on a different day. And he said, you know, as you told me that I have an expect, um, my expectations of people's education is too high your expectation of people's emotional intelligence and for their introspectiveness tends to be too high. You give people too much credit for having looked into themselves and decided what kind of people they wanna be. And boy, do I own that. <laughs> I really do. Um, I grew up in a paradigm of improvement, okay? Of, okay, you're doing good, how can you do better, you know? Um, what do you know about yourself? What part did you play in it? Like when I got beat up at school, um, I didn't have the mom that was, oh, my baby, my baby, my baby. No, she was like, okay, so what did you do to make them want to hit you? <laughs> and it, it became kind of daunting. It, it, it really was a PETA, a 
pain in the esophagus. I know that starts with an E. I'm trying to be PG-13, okay? Um, but having to show that I could recognize the part that I play in a lot of things really helped me keep myself in mind, you know, keep my opinions, why I believe how I believe. Like, I, I was trained for introspection. Um, <clears throat> now, this, uh, again, anything taken too far becomes toxic. Um, so, you know, this mindset of me not quite understanding that not everybody was brought up asking the question, you know, uh, what part did you play in this? I forget that. I forget that there are certain people, a lot of people, that don't look for that kind of evolution. They just want to go along being what they were. They never had to question being wrong. And a lot of people have never had to be held accountable for their actions. And like it, hate it, judge it, the only thing I can say about it is that is the way that things have been up to this point in my life. Okay. Recognizing it and navigating it is what's important. And that brings us right back to communication and understanding the type of game players that you know. Um, there is two things when it comes to what I just said, the navigation, um, you know, understanding it and navigating it. And that's this. A lot of people go through stress because they don't like the way certain people behave. And I know in a lot of my friend circles, when I complain about people's behavior, I'm told, stop being so controlling, stop trying to change them, stop trying to not let them be themselves. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not trying to change who anyone is fundamentally. I'm just trying to navigate their prejudices, their behaviors, you know, um, primarily because if I don't navigate it properly, I could find myself with five bullets to the chest because someone called the cops and the cops felt threatened. And that's real. And I didn't want to get that real here. I, I really didn't. But the reality is, over my lifetime of learning these games and playing with people, I've had to cross through very hostile places. And each new city and each new county and each new state all have their own anthropological rules. They have their own paradigm. They have their own understandings of or their own definitions of who qualifies as people, um, who qualifies as worthy to play, who qualifies as a threat, um, someone who's trying to ruin gaming or someone who's trying to tell me how to hobby, you know? And understanding these things is essential to me because I need to know how to navigate these things. You know, I'm not telling the floor to not be covered with glass. I just don't want to step on a pile. You know what I mean? It, it, it's just one of those things. Um, mm, hot buttered rum. Good to know. Um, another hot drink. Thank you, chat. Let's, uh, let's take a look at these guys. Burr, 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 burr. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. And flying a helicopter is much more complicated than riding a horse. People learn how to ride horses in third grade. Um, but not how to fly helicopters. So, um... Let me check on my notes here. Check on my notes. Check on my notes. Oh, yes. Keeping up with the Joneses. Now, this is a big one. And this was something I kind of fell into for about five or six years. Now, keeping up with the Joneses is um, very much um, a colloquial term for keeping up appearances or trying to look like you belong. Um, this happens a lot in gaming. Anyone who's ever played a collectible card game will be able to relate to this. Um, in this context, it can be seen as staying relevant with power creep or staying up to up to currents on Unearthed Arcana or the new erratas that come out or the new books that come out. Because whenever there's something new, it has the excitement of novelty or as some would say, new relationship energy. So everyone jumps on it and they want to hurry up and get it. Um, in one of the last gaming sessions that I ran, the characters leveled up and they were more concerned with using their new abilities 
than they were furthering the plot or interacting with each other. So I had to navigate that, set up a chance for them to do it, and make sure that the game could keep going because we only had a limited amount of time to play. Um, that, that, that was a real thing, but, you know, I had to understand what they would consider fun and how to navigate that and how to help everyone else navigate it so that we all got to the same def um, the same destination regardless of the roads that we were in. But keeping up with the Joneses is a tough one. Especially when you play competitive games. Because, um, you know, again, this isn't a video game channel. But I'm going to use video game culture as a great example of this. Now, any of you guys that have played any games online, Fallout, um, way back in my day, Unreal, uh, <laughs> um, <coughs> Overwatch, um, Fortnite, World of Warcraft, um, um, Starcraft, you know, um, keeping up with the Joneses is very, very important because if you don't, you're wiped off of the board within 30 seconds. And, you know, when you hit the, um, when you hit the gameplay area, you get 15 seconds and then you're stuck respawning for two minutes. It does not seem like a very good, cool thing to do. And again, some people will say, get good noob, you know, because they play 11 or 12 hours of the game a day. Um, there's a... There's a web series on YouTube called Battlefield Friends, and, you know, they talk about this with a hundredth level character that asks the other characters if they have a bucket, because if they're going to the battle battlefield, um, <clears throat> you know, if they're if they're going to the bathroom, they're not playing Battlefield. Um, so this is a tough one because there is a lot of ways that you have to keep up with the Joneses in competitive environment. Yeah, sometimes it is about keeping up appearances, but sometimes you end up losing just because you don't have enough money to constantly upgrade your system. Um, as you guys know, we've been doing upgrades here at the Wizard's Tower, so hey, look at all the new backgrounds and all that stuff. But part of that came <clears throat> from upgrading some hardware. And that costed a lot of money. I had to save for a long time, and I had to, um, I had to work some day jobs that kept me from either um, broadcasting or editing. Um, and there's still more upgrades to go because we're still trying to improve. Um, versus other channels that are out there that have better production quality because they have more people on it, they have higher budgets, they have much more modern much better equipment i've been in a constant fight with someone because i don't do anything in 4k but sorry guys a 4k camera cost at least fifteen hundred dollars and then the lens might cost two thousand um so that's a hard thing keeping up with the joneses or staying current staying relevant um sometimes you'll lose in a in a on massive multiplayer online game because your video card isn't strong enough and I've upgraded video cards in boxes before, and sometimes you need the video card that'll keep up with what's out there so that you don't have any lag, but the video card that you need is stronger than your processor can do, so you gotta upgrade your whole thing. It just becomes this whole pile. I mean, we can say sometimes that keeping up with the Joneses falls into the this is the house the Jack built thing. Um, so, my key to navigating all of this stuff has always been communication. Um, as you guys know, I'm a big fan of Hero Clicks, although I don't play anymore. But I played that game for 15 years, and it has the same buying structure as Magic the Gathering, which means figures from six years ago are not possible to play on a board today against modern figures because their numbers are too low or the modern or the modern figures have so many abilities that negate the stuff that could have been done five years ago they're just not practical figures um but i know my girlfriend was spending 250 dollars at a time for cases of the new um cases of the new stuff so hey a new x-men sets out 250 dollars hey a new star trek set is out 250 dollars you know and <clears throat> i'm lucky that she can do that but i always think back to when the game started and i couldn't not because i've come such a long way i haven't but 
there are people out there that want to play these games that are right there. You, you, you see what I mean on that? You know? Um, so the number one thing that I was trying to do is communicate with new players, letting them know. I'm teaching you the game mechanics with the old stuff. Or when I sat down with players that did play in tournaments, I'm like, okay, um, can we play from these sets and nothing newer? You know, can we cut off the um, line at maybe three or four releases ago? That way <clears throat> you don't have the new over-the-top thing that will beat everything that came before it that I haven't had the money to buy or the time to learn and strategize around you see what i mean um when i was playing war machine from privateer press this was a big thing because that's one of the games that's won in the building of the team and um if you build the wrong team you lose <laughs> it's just that simple um but if you don't have the time or the energy or the finances to buy the multiple sets of hundred dollar um, miniatures to keep up with these Joneses then you're probably not gonna win the game if you're playing at any tournament or playing at anyone who are uh, playing with anyone who primarily plays in a tournament you see what I mean so the number one thing is to be able to look at the players that are around you um, look at the type of player you are and to navigate which players you play what games with at what time okay this is the number one way to maximize fun um one of my closest friends um he plays games in theory his number one thing of fun is learning new games and this guy has rooms okay rooms full of games that he's only played three times <laughs> Um, um, and other rooms of games that he's backed on Kickstarter and has yet to open. So, um, and when I want to research a new game or when I want to force him to play a game that neither one of us have played, he's the guy I go to. When I want to play something super duper competitive, I know who to go to. If I want to, if I just want to experiment with something, I know where to go to and a lot of the times I know to just stay home and play alone you know these are things that I've managed to navigate and they keep me less angry and more interested in playing games now for those of you guys out there that don't come from gaming culture and are having a hard time trying to figure out where to start what to do what to look for I got a couple of tips okay um, first thing If you're interested in playing a game, find the person at the game store. If you're lucky enough to have a game store, find the person at the game store that will talk to you about something other than playing games. Okay, finding out what people like outside of that hobby will give you a much better look into their personality. All right. Um, at one of the local gaming stores about 20 minutes from where I live, there are a lot of people that work there, and I can't give you a whole lexicon of the things I see that makes me go, well, I'm assessing this, this is my prejudgment, now let's have an experience to either confirm or deny that judgment. But there's one guy that I talk to at the local gaming store that I don't go to very often, um, and he and I talk about film. He and I, we talk about the movies we like, the movies we like to watch um and he has a better outlook of my personality i have a better outlook of him we throw each other suggestions we play each other from time to time and it's all cool it's all good you know um where there's another game store that's owned by my old manager from when i worked at a game store where when i want to go and learn how to win i go to him Okay, he's a hell of a coach, not a teacher, a coach. Okay, once you know the rules of the game, this is one of the dudes that can teach you how to win if he plays the game. 
<laughs> um, and if I want to learn a new game, I got, you know, my really good friend that I go to that has rooms of games that he's never played, let alone that I've never played. So, <clears throat> again, those are ways that I can navigate stuff. Um, next week, I want to talk a little about the online environment. Okay. The online environment when it comes to playing games and kind of how to navigate your way through that. But we're kind of running out of time. Yep, I'm being played off like I'm on the Oscars or something. So I want to thank you guys for showing up today. Um, you know, for showing support. It is always, always appreciated. Seriously, because God knows. Um, <clears throat> I got no problem talking into the wind all day. But it's nice when some people can hear me and tell me when I'm on the wrong track or when I'm on the right track or, you know, when they really identify with what I say or when they don't identify whatsoever, but they'll be willing to have a, um, a good faith conversation about it. So I don't expect you guys to agree with me. I just hope that you guys will be willing to put some of the stuff I talk to you guys about into practice and let me know the results. If they don't work for you, maybe, hey, we can um, talk to stuff, talk to each other about stuff. But in the meantime, um, this has been, you know, I, I, I think this has been a cool show. If you guys um, really do have it in you, just head on over to patreon.com slash BID underscore P and, um, you know, become a Decker. Um, or should I say become a public Decker? Okay, that, that's because you guys are Deckers whether or not you know it. But, uh, yeah, um, come on in, throw me a dollar a month or five bucks a month or something like that. You know, if you can afford a hundred, I ain't gonna say no, you know, except, well, I won't say no to the money, but I might say no to the stuff that you say, hey, I want you to do a show on this. And I'll be like, no, but I'll do a show on this. I'm a no, but not a yes. And, <laughs> um, but, um, if you guys can't do all that, that's cool. I, there are other ways that you guys can help me out, like heading over to gmail.com um, or heading over to whatever email service you use and sending me a letter at backinthedeck at gmail.com. It's B-A-C-K-I-N-T-H-E-D-E-C-K -E 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 at um, gmail.com. Um, you know, send me an email. Let me know how you feel about stuff. Let me know if you want to talk to me specifically about stuff. I can correspond with you. The email goes to my phone which is on me all the time. Um, hit up the social media stuff on Twitter and Instagram. Join Deckers on the Book on Facebook. Um, sign up over on our YouTube channel. That would honestly help us out a whole lot. Just like, subscribe, push the little bell, do all that stuff. Check out the old videos. That would honestly be very cool. And of course, share them with your friends, being like, hey, this is a friend of mine, or this is some random wacky dude that tries to talk about real big life stuff, but he's a crazy person. Um, you should check out his stuff if for no other reason to try and disprove him and start an internet beef. That would be kind of cool. <laughs> um, actually, it wouldn't, it, it, it wouldn't be cool. But yeah, just uh, head on over to Deckers on the Book. Um, on Facebook, like I said, hit the YouTube channel. That's BidP on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram. Download our stuff from... Um, from soundcloud.com slash bid underscore p you'll be able to see all of those things there listen to previous episodes who knows if you like my soothing voice maybe i can accompany you virtually on like a road trip or something like that but i can't accompany you now because it is done that is it we are out of here i didn't get any questions on the emails to answer over the over the um over the airwave so that's perfectly fine and um you know just feel free to reach out and all that stuff but until then if anybody tells you that you can't like what you like because of the circumstances of your birth being race religion creed gender identity sexual orientation your disability or your budget you just tell them that we said to take them cards and put them back in the deck and i want to let you guys know that disabilities also fall our neurodivergencies definitely fall under the categories of disabilities because god knows i have quite a few neurodivergences of my own and with that i will see you guys next time on the dark side of the room um you can join us tomorrow we have a new a new ish show um 
where tomorrow we go into, um, hang on, I'm double checking what is on our program schedule for tomorrow, because we are going to be broadcasting tomorrow before I give mom her day. Um, but tomorrow we have, do, 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 do. ah, there we go. Tomorrow is the game gallery where we actually talk about a particular game. Um, or two so join us for that and you guys will be able to see some of the games that we look at and who knows I may even give a lesson online so that you guys can actually figure out what to do how to do it and all that stuff if you decide to pick up the game that we focus on tomorrow but until then like I said if anybody tells you you can't like what you like because of the circumstances of your birth being race religion creed gender identity sexual orientation your disability or your budget you just tell them that we said take them cards and put them back in the deck this is solar gray the cinematic source we're saying that we'll see you guys next time on the dark side of the room and hopefully tomorrow in the game gallery